Hey guys, so we're moving on to chapter 10, which is trigonometric identities and equations. We're going to do a little bit of recapping of some bits from GCSE, but really going to extend that quite quickly. Then we move on to looking at identities, and then afterwards we'll be doing some things with equations, and then some more complicated equations later on. So we're going to get started straight away. This first video is just going to be a reminder of some of the things that we've already come across. So it's a bit of a recap. Um, so first of all, I want to actually say, what actually are the trigonometric ratios? Well, for a right angled triangle like we've got here, we want to be able to say what are the properties of these different sides. So to start off with, the one, the side that is opposite the right angle, we know that we call the hypotenuse. Next to the angle is the adjacent, and opposite the angle is simply called the opposite. So we should remember from these definitions that sine theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, that cos theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and that tan theta is the opposite divided by the adjacent. And usually the way that people remember this is so ka toa. Okay, nothing new there, just wanted to remind us actually what are the trigonometric ratios. So they're actually a way of us being able to describe that the sine of an angle, it's not actually telling us any particular thing other than the ratio between the length of the opposite of the triangle and the hypotenuse of the triangle. So it's actually a ratio between two sides of a triangle, and that's why we call it a trigonometric ratio, okay? The next thing I wanted to recap is some of the things that we would have mentioned in chapter nine about the co-function identity. So the co-function identity has just got some interesting properties about the sine and cosine. So I've written here, have you ever wondered why cosine contains the word sine? So first of all, I need to tell you a little bit about some things to do with angles like I've got here. To begin with, there's a type of angle pair that we call supplementary angles. And these are two angles which add up to 180 degrees. But this has not got anything to do with the cosine, okay? I just wanted to tell you about these couple of different angle types. The next type are called complementary angles, which add to 90 degrees. So clearly here, A and B add to 90 degrees because they are inside a right angle. Now, when you draw a triangle that is right angled, you can see that these two angles here, A and B, must be complementary. Obviously, if they will add up to 180 and this is 90, A and B must also add up to 90. So I'm just going to remind you of this property that we explored before. And we're going to think about these two angles here, 50 and 40. These two angles that we've got here, they are actually complementary angles because they add up to 90. And we're going to see if the, the sine and cosine of these complementary angles, we're going to see what happens with them. OK, so the cosine of 50 is going to be, looking at this angle, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. It's going to be x divided by z. And the sine of 40, where well, we're looking at this angle now, it's going to be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, which is also just going to be x divided by z. So what we can actually see here is that the sine of 40 is the same as the cosine of 50. And this is no coincidence. So what I've written here is that the cosine of an angle is the sine of the complementary angle. Hence, cosine is the complementary sine. You can almost imagine the complementary sine, cosine, becomes cosine. Let's just actually remind ourselves what this says. The cosine of an angle, the cosine of 50 degrees, is the sine of the complementary angle. And so this is what we have as the cofunction identity. The sine of theta is equal to the cosine of 90 minus theta and the cosine of theta is the sine of 90 minus theta. So let's just quickly do that with a couple of examples. I could say, therefore, that the sine of 10 degrees from this part is equal to the cosine of 80 degrees. And I guess if I make up another one, I could say that the cosine of 20 is equal to the sine of 70. So just as long as this angle and this angle add up to 90, then you can switch between sine and cosine. Now, I'm hoping you're saying to yourself, well, I wonder what this might look like as a graph. So I've drawn here the graphs of sine and cosine, 
but I've only restricted it between 0 and 90. And the reason I've stopped between 0 and 90, because at the moment, we're just talking about triangles. And because we're talking about triangles, it only makes sense that the angles go between 0 and 90 degrees, because you're not really going to be able to have a triangle that goes beyond 90 degrees. And hopefully what you can see here is this pattern, that the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of 90 minus theta. So I don't know, we talked about the sine of 20, for example. Clearly this red one here is sine theta, because it starts from 0, and this blue one is the cos of theta. And I think one of the ones we just said was that the sine of 20 is equal to the cos of 70. So let's have a look at the sine of 20. So the sine of 20, there's my 20, and it seems that the sine of 20 is, I don't know, about 0 0.35, something like that. And if I now have a look at the cos of 70, so I'm now going to look at 70 degrees on the cos one, yet yeah, you can clearly see that they give you the same thing. And what you'll also notice is that there's a particular point on this graph where they have got exactly the same value. And the place where they have exactly the same value is over here. And no surprise is the angle where they are exactly the same is 45. So what this part of the graph tells me is that the cos of 45 is the same as sine of 45. And you can interchange those ones that we've got there. OK, so that first video is just a bit of a recap on this. We're now going to be moving on to the, the proper New Year 12 stuff.